No, shall be dark. Shall be as the light of the sun. Shall be as the light of the sun. Illumination. Remember, he said in verse 20 and 29 that ye shall have a song as in the night when a assembly is kept. Remember, the moon is a feast of signs. I mean, a sign of feast, excuse me. Read again, verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, as the light of seven days. Read. And the day that the Lord bind up the breach of his people. That's future prophecy when we're in the kingdom. Not now, but when we're in the kingdom. Come on. And heal the stroke of their womb. All right, drop that. Give me Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, verse 10. Joel chapter 2 and verse 10. I'm going to give you a precept about the dark moon. You want to get that? Oh. going to skip around a little bit. I can get it, baby. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Joel chapter 2 and verse 10. Joel chapter 2 verse 10. Come on. The earth shall quake before them. The earth shall quake before them. Come on. The heavens shall tremble. Come on. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. What is this? Is this a blessing? Is this something good? What is this referred to as? A what? Or the what? The Lord's day. The Lord's day. Judgment. Judgment day. <clears throat> Read again from the top. Joel chapter 2 verse 10. Notice also that Esau, when you look at these um, like a Halloween movies or whatever, or Halloween commercials, they love to put the full moon in something bad. You guys ever notice so that? Do. On yeah. the commercial. Yeah. They love to put the full moon like something yeah. bad. I used to believe the same thing too. Yeah. Yeah, like a werewolf. Oh. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's something yeah. evil or whatever. Read it again. Joel chapter 2, verse 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. No, shall be light. Shall be dark. It shall be dark on that day. It shall be a dark moon on that day when the Lord returns. Come on. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. You see that? Drop that. Give me Joel chapter 3 and verse 15. No, start at verse 12. Joel, Joel chapter 3 and verse 12. This is dealing with a dark moon. And as we read, notice it don't say anything about a feast uh, concerning the moon being dark. Joel chapter 3 verse 12. Read. Let the heathens be awakened, be wakened, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Which is the valley of the decision where the Lord going to make his um, interest into the earth. For there will I sit to judge all the heathens round about. This is referring to judgment day. Come on. Put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come on. Come get you down for the press is full. The fat overflow for their wickedness is great. Remaining the what? Destruction is at hand for these Gentile nations. Come on. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Referring to your armies, like your Marines, your Air Force Ones, navies. Come on. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Which is the valley of Jehoshaphat. Come on. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. The Lord say what? The sun and the moon shall be darkened. So the sun and the moon shall be darkened. Referring to judgment. Referring to judgment, not a feast or not the beginning of a month. This is judgment. This is something bad that's going to happen. Come on. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. All right, drop that. Give me Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29. Matthew 
Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Come on. Immediately after the tribulation. Immediately what? Immediately after the tribulation. After the tribulation, referring to what? Jacob's trouble. Come on. Of those days shall the sun be darkened. Shall the sun be darkened. Come on. And the moon shall not give her light. And the moon shall be darkened. Come on. And the stars shall fall from heaven. And the stars shall be darkened. Come on. And the power and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Read. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So when the sun is darkened, as well the moon and stars, the Lord say what? Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Which is Christ Jesus. Come on. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Come on. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Why are these tribes of the earth going to mourn? Because of judgment. It's, it's time for the Lord to do what he needs to do. To get rid of some people. Two thirds. Two thirds. Along with these other Gentile nations. They going to mourn because it's really real. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because they just yeah. Because a lot of these Gentiles, along with our people, yeah. didn't think that he would come back. Yeah. They didn't think Christ was going to show up. Truly real. Truly real. Read it one more time, verse 29 from the top. Verse 29. Immediately after tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. And the moon shall be darkened. And the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Read. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Come on. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with powers and great glory. All right, drop that. Give me Revelation chapter 8, verse 6. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 6. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 6. This is dealing with one of the seven trumpets of judgment from the Most High God. Revelations chapter 8 verse 6. Come on. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared them selves to sound. So, the, so once again, these are the seven angels that were preparing judgment upon the earth. They had seven trumpets. Drop down to verse 12. Verse 12. Come on. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten. So the sun was smitten or darkened by the, the sound of the fourth angel. Come on. And the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars. So the moon was smitten. It was dark. And the third of the stars was dark. Come on. So as the third part of them was darkened. Read. And the day shone not for a third part of it. And the night likewise. You see that? This symbolizes what? You just said it earlier. It symbolizes what? The moon being darkened. The sun being darkened. The stars being darkened. It symbolizes what? Judgment. 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 All right, from there, drop that. Give me the book of Baruch, chapter 6 and verse 60. Baruch, chapter 6 and verse 60. Chapter 6, verse 60. Come on. For sun, moon, and stars being bright. Being what? Being bright. No, being dark. Being bright. Being bright. Meaning light is involved. Mm -hmm. Light illumination is involved. 
Come on. And sit to do their offices are obedient. Are obedient. Read it one more time. For sun, moon, and stars being bright and sent to do their offices are obedient. Are obedient. Drop that. Give me the book of 2 Ezra chapter 6 and verse 38. <laughs> Got one more. Sorry. Okay, Got one more. 2 Ezra chapter 6 and verse 38. This is what I was looking for earlier. This is what I was looking for. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 38. Now remember the, the most I don't leave nothing unfinished. And remember the word perfect means complete. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 38. Read. And I said, O Lord, thou speakest from the beginning of the creation. Thou speakest from the beginning of the creation, when the most I made the sun, moon, and stars. Come on. Even the first day. Come on. And said it thus. Let heaven and earth be made. Read. And thy word. And thy what? And thy word. And God's word, his commandment, his law. Read. Was a perfect work. Was a what? Was a perfect work. Was a what? Was a perfect work. So the Lord's work was a perfect work during the time of creation. When he made the sun, moon, and stars, and the heavens and the earth. He left nothing partial or undone. Everybody see that? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. It's going to explain. Uh, why how you saw here lie and turn everything upside down? Isaiah 29, verse 15. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 29 mm -hmm. verse 15 mm -hmm. Woe unto them that seek thee to hide their counsel from the Lord mm -hmm. and their works are in the dark so mostly in the dark that's when they do all these old evil things and their work and their works are in the dark. You know, in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? Mm -hmm. And who knoweth us? Because they changed all the times. They changed all the stuff. The celebrations and everything that we had, they changed it all. We. Surely you're turning our things upside down. So you're turning everything upside down. Shall be esteemed mm -hmm. as the potter's clay. Read. For shall the work say to him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, He had no understanding? There it is. He turned everything upside down. That's what he's saying. And, uh, and who did it? Who's responsible for that? He saw. Thank you. He's all responsible for turning everything upside down. So whatever they do, we need to make sure that we want to do what? The opposite. Because the most I told them not to be nothing like them. Just work on my shirt. Jeremiah chapter 10. It's a beautiful shirt. I love this shirt. <laughs> now with this shirt, put it all up. Get one more. Let me get a preacher real quick. Hold one second. Just to pick it back off, Brother Obadiah. Give me... Uh, Daniel chapter 7, I think it's verse 25. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Oh, 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 you're right. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. See, that's the spirit. That's right. So I didn't know you had that. Yep. I don't even have that in my notes. I don't think. <laughs> Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Come on. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Who is this he? <laughs> he who? He's a, he's a. Jump up, right. Jump up to verse uh, 23. Let's get the context. Verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom. 
upon the earth. Come on. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. Come on. And shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. Hold that. Give me the book of 2 Ezra chapter 12 verse 10. To pick it back off Brother Richardson. This is a precept concerning that fourth beast that was in Daniel's vision. The prophet Israel is going to reveal who that fourth beast was that changed times and laws mm -hmm. that Daniel spoke about. Second Ezra chapter 12 and verse 10. Second Ezra chapter 12 verse 10. Come on. For thou hast judged me worthy to show me mm -hmm. In 2 Ezra 12 and 10. Yeah, 12 and 10. Oh, that's 12 and 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, read, read 9. Okay, read 9. I just saw some. Read 9. That's fine. Read 9. 2 Ezra <laughs> chapter 12, verse 9. Come on. For thou hast judged me worthy to show me the last time. The last time, referring to the last days that we're living in right now. Come on. And he said unto me. Come on, this is Ezra. Come on. This is the interpretation of the vision. Read. The eagle. The what? The eagle. The eagle. Come on. Who thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom. Is the what? Is the kingdom. Is the kingdom. That fourth kingdom that was in Daniel's vision. Come on. Which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. You see that? Now go back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. Daniel chapter 7 verse 23 Thus he said The fourth beast Which is that eagle that Ezra revealed Come on Shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth Which is what? The United States of America A.K.A. Babylon the Great Come on Which shall be the Which shall be diverse Which shall be different Come on From all kingdoms Come on And shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Drop down to verse 25. Verse 25. Come on. And he shall speak great words. Referring to this fourth beast, which is the eagle. Come on. Against the Most High. Come on. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Which are the Israelites. Come on. And think to change times. And do what? Think to change times. And think to change times. Like to, um, at 12 o'clock midnight. The time will go back, an hour back. Think they change times. That's the night. Mm-hmm, that's the night. According to Esau, mm. they're going to change the time. That's, that's what this man is doing, this fourth beast, this eagle, changing the time. God already set the time up. Mm -hmm. Way back in Genesis, mm -hmm. and also Sirach chapter 43, concerning the moon. A, a light that decreases. Esau said, no, it's a dark moon. Come on. And he and think to change times and laws. Come on. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. The dividing of time. Go ahead, bro. Hold up. Read that again. I like that. Read that again. 25. Verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Mm -hmm. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And wearing us out. With the foolishness, with the doctrines, the divisions, and stuff like that. Real. And think to change times and laws. Mm -hmm. And they shall be given into the hands, into his hands, into his hand. until a time and times and the dividing of time. What's that scripture I'm looking for? Well, uh, <clears throat> he gave the keys to the hand of the wicked. That's in. Job nine twenty four. Job chapter 9, verse 24. Mm -hmm. 
The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. That's that same hand that we just read in James 7 and 25. Read. He covered the face of the judges thereof. Mm -hmm. If not, where and who is he? So who is the wicked? Esau. So we know we, we got approved, so we're going to go to where? Malachi? I'm going to get through. <laughs> We go on and on. You see how these precepts just keep proving and breaking the scripture down, make you understand. Malachi, the first chapter. Verse 2. Malachi, chapter 1, verse 2. <coughs> I have loved you, said the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Said the Lord, Yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau, mm -hmm. and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. <laughs> Whereas Edom said, okay. we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts, you say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to build. They shall build, mm -hmm. but I will throw down. I will tear it down. All the land, all the foundations, all the wealth, everything they got, I'm going to tear it down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord had great That's right, you right too, you can say great <laughs> The people against whom the Lord had great indignation <laughs> forever He got great indignation toward these people forever Those are the wicked They're responsible for keeping us in the tailspin that we're in right now no, at this moment, sir. What what I what we found all the stuff doing too. What I was talking to my <clears throat> sister about it earlier. You know, we've been this this congregation, man, we've been attacked, man, by Dean. Several demons. They have caused a lot of division amongst us, the city stuff. Why? We ain't getting together like we should more. If we got to get together more often, we got to start praying more. If we can't meet another time other than the Sabbath, we need to probably, you know, touch bases on the phone through, uh, uh, what they call it, you know. Zoom or either yeah, um, yeah, we can we can either do a Zoom meeting or something like that right now, and say some prayers, man. We need prayer. We need prayer, man. Especially around this time of the month, man. They out there doing all the Halloween, the wickedness. I mean, those demons are running wild, man. We allow them to come up in here, and they attack us because we ain't standing on prayer like we should. They're taking it, they're, they're easy and they take the love right out. And replace it with hate, anger, madness, pride. All those things ain't of the Lord. Those ain't of the Most High. So we got to come together more often, man, and, and try to pray more. Not try to do it. We stay in prayer, man. We stay protected. There's a scripture that proves that, too. I don't know exactly the way it's at. Okay. Um, prayer keep us protected, man. We got to continue to stay in prayer. That one is there. Let's stay in prayer. Stay in prayer with one another. You know, and, and have mercy on one another. Come on, we can be mean as hell to one another. <laughs> but we can be a damn lion to one another. <laughs> but then go right out there and treat Esau good. And love him more than you love your own brother. I understand. Right. Okay. 
Jackson will give as much. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think mean, it's got to be somewhere strong. I mean, that's an interesting song for King David. It's also he's probably one of them. That's all I have to know. So one moment, y'all. One moment. One moment. I think so. Psalms 25. Let The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That we give all praises to the Most High in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.